Hey everybody, welcome to today's video lecture on the third of our 4C style principles, continuity. In today's lecture, we'll begin by defining our terms, and we'll then talk about tips for establishing flow in your writing, which is just another way of saying establishing continuity in your writing. So let's start out by defining our terms. And the first thing you need to know is that continuity primarily enhances your writing at the paragraph level. Previously, we've talked about clarity and concision, the first two of our 4C style principles, and those style principles are primarily useful for enhancing your writing at the sentence level. Continuity, by contrast, primarily uh, works at the paragraph level. More specifically, continuity is what establishes flow in your writing. It helps readers understand the links, the connections between sentences. And it's important because without continuity, your sentences are just isolated islands of meaning. It turns out that reading is actually a very cognitively complex task. And to help our readers understand our writing, we've got to build connections for them between our sentences. That's key to understanding. So uh, with that in mind, let's now talk about how you can actually do that, how you can establish flow in your writing. And to do so, you need to build logical connections between the content of sentence pairs. If sentences without continuity are isolated islands of meaning, then continuity provides the bridges between those isolated islands. More specifically, you want to use three main techniques to establish continuity in your writing. You use transitions to indicate logical relationships between sentence pairs. You use sequencing to link sentences with different subjects or topics. And you use common subjects to link sentences with shared or identical subjects or topics. So let's start out by discussing transitions in greater depth. And again, transitions are words or phrases that you can use to indicate logical relationships between sentences. Uh, there are a wide variety of transitions at your disposal. Uh, you can use transitions to signal shifts in thought or in time, as with words like however or subsequently. You can use transitions to show progression or sequence, as with words like first or finally. And you can use transitions to signal and summarize points, as with words or phrases like for example or to conclude. Now, to illustrate the effectiveness of transitions, let's look at an example. And we're going to start out by looking at a sample paragraph that includes well-written sentences, right? The individual sentences in this paragraph are clear and concise, but that nevertheless lacks flow. In this case, because we have failed to use uh, transitions to bind sentences together. So let's look at this sample paragraph. Esther is an outstanding manager. She frequently has trouble communicating her priorities to subordinates. She struggles to manage her time effectively. Her department has high morale and generates impressive sales figures. Now, the meaning of that paragraph, again, it's basically clear. The individual sentences are fine but it's not always apparent how these sentences are connected together or what their relationship to one another is. We can demonstrate this relationship more clearly by including transitions to link these sentences, to indicate the logical relationships between them. So here's, the re here's a revised version of that paragraph. Esther is an outstanding manager. However, indicating contrast, 
However, she frequently has trouble communicating her priorities to subordinates. She also, also indicating continuity, she also struggles to manage her time effectively. Nevertheless, again, indicating contrast or a change in direction. Nevertheless, her department has high morale and generates impressive sales figures. Notice how much clearer that is, how how much stronger the flow throughout that paragraph is than in the original version of this paragraph. Now let's look at our second continuity technique, sequencing. Sequencing is what we use to link sentences with different subjects. It works by referencing content from one sentence, typically the end of one sentence, in the next sentence, typically the beginning of the next sentence. I oftentimes think about sequencing like links in a chain, right? Where you've got the end of one link overlapping with the beginning of the next. And that's how you create those connections between links in a chain. So once again, let's look at an example of sequencing beginning with a paragraph that fails to take advantage of sequencing. So here's the paragraph. Several major American corporations collapsed or faced crisis in 2008. In March, J.P. Morgan acquired Bear Stearns. Lehman Brothers closed its doors in September of that year. The federal government bailed out insurance company AIG in September. Now, once more, we've got strong individual sentences. These sentences are clear and they are concise, but the paragraph lacks flow. And we can enhance the flow uh, of this paragraph. We can build stronger links between these sentences, all of which have different subjects by using sequencing. So here's a revised version of that paragraph. Several major American corporations collapsed or faced crisis in 2008. In March of that year, for instance, J.P. Morgan acquired Bear Stearns. Six months after that acquisition, in September 2008, Lehman Brothers closed its doors too. And in the same month, the federal government bailed out insurance company AI. G. And that paragraph is significantly stronger. It has better flow because it uses sequencing. We're linking the first and second sentences by referencing 2008 at the end of that first sentence in the second sentence, referring to that year. We're linking the second and third sentence uh, with acquired and that acquisition. And we're binding together the latter half of that paragraph by referring back to months or specific months on repeated occasions. That's how we're forging those connections between sentences. But that's not the only technique that we're using here. Uh, the, the, the keenest eye amongst you might have noticed that we're also using transitions to indicate those logical connections between sentences. So we've got, for instance, we've got after, and we've got and, all indicating those logical relationships between sentences. Now let's talk about our final continuity technique, common subjects. Common subjects is the technique that you want to use to link sentences with the same or similar subjects. Common subjects creates flow by organizing sentences around the same person, place, or thing, right? It's that simple. Uh, readers understand the connections between sentences when they're about the same person, place, or thing. So let's uh, begin wrapping up this video lecture by looking at one last example of a paragraph that lacks flow. So on the left, we've got this paragraph. Buy for Less started doing business in 2016 when my sister Madison arrived at UF. Technology had been an area of interest for her since she was a freshman in high school. It wasn't until she met her current business partner, fellow UF student Christine Kramer, that the idea of starting a business crossed her mind. Buy for Less is currently one of the largest student-owned businesses in Gainesville. And once more, we've got a paragraph with 
individually strong, clear, and concise sentences. But the paragraph as a whole lacks flow because the subject of the sentence keeps bouncing around. It's not clear what the unifying theme or the, the, the links between these sentences are. So we can revise it as follows. My sister Madison created Buy for Less when she arrived at UF. She has been interested in, in technology since she was a freshman in high school, but she never considered starting a used laptop retail company until she met her business partner, fellow UF student Christine Kramer. Now, her company is one of the largest student-owned businesses in Gainesville. And we're binding these sentences together, as you probably noticed, by organizing all of them around Madison. Uh, in those first three sentences, Madison, uh, or the pronoun she representing Madison, is literally the subject of the sentence. And then in that final sentence, uh, even though the subject of the sentence is her company, we're still using the possessive pronoun her to direct the reader's attention back to Madison. It's clear that even though Madison herself is not the subject of the sentence, that she's still uh, connected to this sentence in a very important fashion. In addition, we're also using transitions here, as we were in the previous example. And this is a good moment to uh, say that you should always feel free to mix and match continuity techniques. You can always use transitions in conjunction with either sequencing or common subjects to double down, to, to doubly reinforce those connections between sentences. And that brings us to the end of this video lecture. As a quick reminder, uh, continuity is a style principle that enhances your writing at the paragraph level. More specifically, it creates flow in your writing, and it does so by helping readers understand links between sentences. The three most common techniques at your disposal include transitions, which indicate logical relationships between sentences, sequencing, which helps you bind together sentences with different subjects, and common subjects, which helps you bind together sentences with the same or similar subjects. And that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody.